Biden says that Israel should not target Iranian nuke facilities. What are your thoughts on that? What should Israel respond? I mean, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. It's the biggest risk we have. The biggest risk we have is nuclear. I mean, to make the statement, please leave their nuclear alone, uh, I would tell you that that's not the right answer. That was the craziest answer. Because you know what? Soon they're going to have nuclear weapons and then you're going to have problems. We heard it from Iran's supreme leader today. He does not come out and give a sermon. He has not done it in years. And yet he did today. And among other things, he expressed solidarity with Palestinians and Hezbollah. And he says Israel won't last long. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei denounced Iran's enemies, pointing to Israel. The actions taken by our armed forces a few nights ago was a lawful response. There's no question in my mind but that this reflects the theme found over and over again in ancient Celtic mythology whereby a king is believed to be the son of a god or the god who sleeps with the queen on the night that the, that the new king is conceived. And this was a matter of pride that kings were each the son of the god. Recently it was, uh, I don't remember how, day, how many days ago it was, but Donald Trump was knighted. Uh, what's called the Knights of the Round Table in England. And only few people uh, ever received this quote-unquote honor. But what I found was interesting is when I looked at the emblem, this secret society or this uh, group of individuals that are brought to this round table. And this emblem is a picture of a cross with a round table with a red dragon. Now, what does the scripture say about the red dragon, people? The emblem of the knights, the emblem of the knights of the round table worn round the necks of all the knights was given to them by King Arthur as part of the ceremony of their being made a knight. The red dragon of King Arthur represented their alliance to the king. The round table was illustrative of the eternity of God, the equality, unity, and comradeship of the order, and singleness of purpose of all the knights. Now, it says here that the red dragon represents the alliance to the king. Well, Who's the king? The would-be assassin, the patsy, Thomas Crooks, reeks of MK Ultra mind control. You hear about vampires, peasants all over the world, just regular people talking about what they were seeing and what was happening. At night, they come, they take children, they drink their blood. So then I began to study a little bit. I'm like, oh. The British royalty are not British at all. Not one drop of blood. In fact, they hate the British and the Irish and the Scots and train them to all kill each other. Because the Brits were the biggest group, they trained them to hate the Scots and the Irish when it was all the same family. They weren't even German. They weren't even saxe coburg gotha They were Transylvanian. They were the house of the dragon, Dracul. And the main line, direct descendant of Vlad the Impaler, the real Count Dracula, is King Charles of 
his Britannic majesty. And behold, a great red dragon. The red are the executives.
Why is it better to be here in Davos than in Washington, D.C.? Well, we're here meeting with world leaders, the biggest, uh, most important people in the world, and we're bringing back tremendous business in the United States, and they're all here to see. Uh, I'll be making a speech, and then we'll be leaving shortly. Uh, but I think it's very important. Uh, the other is just a hoax. It's the witch hunt that's been going on for years, and it's frankly, it's disgraceful. But uh, we look forward to being here. Uh, Klaus has done a fantastic job. And again, we're meeting with the big, biggest companies in the world, the biggest businesses in the world, and world leaders, all for the benefit of the United States. We look forward to the meetings. You with Pre uh, former President Barack Obama, he's speaking tonight. Last time he spoke at the DNC, he said that you never grew into the job as president. Well, I thought he was a terrible president. He didn't do the job. Uh, he also allowed things to happen that shouldn't have happened. He let people take advantage of us on trade, especially trade. He was very weak on trade. I like him. I think he's a nice gentleman, but he was very, very weak on trade. You must assess this world with truth. You must be as a child, meaning pre-programming. That's part of what entering heaven as a child means. You have to be honest with yourself about this world. You're told right off the bat you're on earth. How do you know? Why? Because other humans tell you that? They've told you that's where you are, that this is life, the food chain is normal, biology says so. How do you know that? You're trusting everything you've been told. If your instinct, which is valid, tells you that doesn't make sense, you're right. That's what building your house in a rock means. You must know thyself. Satan controls all of academia, all of the media, all of the money, everything you're told. All its symbols are everywhere, the color blue, the color purple, butterflies. Butterflies are the uh, huge symbol of Satan, the transformation from what you are into what it wants you to be. So it's subconsciously putting that image of metamorphosis out there. You have sorcery being practiced on you. You have all kinds of control methods you couldn't even comprehend. Those who are in control of the world are anti-Christ. It's obvious. They're puppets of Satan. The anti-Christ consciousness and control system here was already there back then. The anti-Christ or diseased cancerous consciousness is what murdered him then and it has risen since. Understand that. That's what happened. And they can argue it all they want. It's what they do. That's why they argue. That's all they can do is argue. And eventually they can't answer questions anymore. So they just talk over you. Or I love this one. You're crazy. You need some therapy. Generally, the people that run the world will come off as the nice ones. Everything they'll say about their group is always going to be, of course, nice. And anybody who says anything against their group is, of course, insane. The implication is they're insane, and, and the group will always be nice about it. You know, I care about you. You seem to be having some mental problems. You might benefit from some therapy. And you create this fraudulent pseudoscience they call it psychology, and you indoctrinate the public into its credibility so that you can draw upon it whenever you are discovered. You witness this all the time, whether you know it or not. You see, in the Bible, they even tell you, watch out for people who give long, extended sermons for praise and their outer persona. It's right in there. But with mind control, people cannot allow themselves to see their primary agenda. They absolutely need, require you to feel responsible for whatever they have done to you. They need you to be ignorant of the extra dimensional influence because if you're ignorant of that you will blame everything on yourself what they do is make you default the best they can make you defy what you normally would do they do all the shit through you pervert you corrupt you your character basically get all the other characters to hate you if possible and then use what they've done to and through you against you satan isn't stupid 
Satan's intellectual strength grows with each new soul that it absorbs. Hence the Marilyn Manson lyric, the more you fear us, the stronger we get. You know, it's a growth. Do you understand that? It's growing like a cancer, like a bunch of computers that are all linked together for super processing. They see no limits. They want new formulas, new calculations, new colors, new sounds, you know? They break your will until eventually you just give yourself to this cancer consciousness so it can absorb you for itself. That's why people that try to do everything right here cannot. But they're conned into thinking this is normal here. And that's what Satan doesn't want you to know. That's what demons don't want you to know. They want you concerned about the future. And they're strategizing against this because they know this knowledge is going to get out. So Satan will try to get you to abandon the mind altogether. Why? Because there is truth in the fraudulent nature of your ego. So it knows that, it knows that truth will come out, so it has to amplify that and exaggerate it beyond usefulness. Get rid of the whole mind! Become a robot! <laughs> Those been taken over by cancer see the world as math, random calculation of possibility, and it can snowball based upon pain and pleasure. Comedy is the number one vector for mind control because it puts you in a pleasurable state and you're focused on the joke and therefore they can slip in so many messages and you'll associate their messages with pleasure. Every truth that is true, they make fun of it as if it's corny and stupid and, uh, you know, that's the whole intent of that. You see it as comedy, expression of a comedian to get some laughs because you don't know how over your head these movie producers are and what is controlling them. If you want to call it Satan, Samiramis, Isis, the serpent, it doesn't matter. And it recruits them and tells them how much it loves them. Do you understand that evil is going to come in the name of love? You think it's stupid? It's going to come in the name of hate? No! The number one thing that evil will push on you is love and how much it loves you. Just like the guy trying to get sex in a bar, telling the girl how much he loves her and how he'll respect her in the morning. Satan plagiarizes to recruit, to entice, to seduce. It plagiarizes the creator. Just love me. Do whatever you want. Just love me and I'll love you back. Satan coordinates this bullshit New Age movement to get people to dissociate. It's no different than getting drunk. Don't talk to me so firmly. You're putting me on a negative vibration. What? It's detachment from your normal instinct to try to help everybody in this realm. You become concerned with your own bliss. Therefore, you don't speak out against it unless you're speaking out to get other people to detach. Lilith, right? All the different names for the serpent. There is a difference between using psychic manipulation to enhance your feeling of pleasure, the tingly sensation that it uses, that Satan uses, and true love. And the irony is this. A lot of these people that are worshipping Satan with whatever name they choose, with whatever form Satan is using to seduce them, when they feel love, that's the love of God. But because you can't discern that with all of this confusion here, Satan just takes credit for that. Yes, that was my love. Satan is like a cancer. Therefore, it has scalar growth and it will see itself as one thing. So, when it seduces and entices and recruits, its reasoning will be very, very close to the reasoning that Christ would have. We are one. I am you. You are me. Very similar to creation in that. Yet, it will have the cancer agenda, right? Hurt other people, that's fine. Just love me. That is the difference. Cancer wants you to do whatever you want to that which is not its creation to destroy it as long as your allegiance is to the cancer and once it sucks you in you're its slave whether you know it in your current role or not it knows so it can be very confusing because it will make a lot of sense it will mirror a lot of the laws of creation except for the love and respect for all of the creations that will be the difference greed materialism there are two oneness campaigns going on simultaneously one of them is the recruiting by the cancer we are one do you understand that we're one consciousness and that is the phenomenon of the all-seeing eye or the hive mind satan can speak through anybody at any time that it's connected to the problem is the majority of these used car salesmen everybody calls priests with this black and white <clears throat> you know the dark side of the yin, the yin yang as these burning incense all of these things you're warned about in the Bible to understand that they are practicing occult Satanism whether they know it or not.
Some of them were probably indoctrinated into Catholicism. Others were indoctrinated into Satanism and are posing as Catholic priests. Either way, they're recruiting and manipulating people with it. And if somebody does know about the occult side of it, they're not going to tell you anyway. So you have to know the truth in order to be able to see this. These people aren't qualified to teach you about spirit any more than somebody's qualified to teach you how to ride a bike who's only read a book about riding a bike and a fraudulent one at that and has never ridden one themselves. They're not qualified. Catholicism is pure Satanism. The problem is you shouldn't need to be told that. You should be able to see that. Priests that come out and need their audience and admiration in their temple. Why does God need a temple, a building? What? It means nothing. But they get off on that because everybody gives the priest their love. They don't give anything back. They just absorb the love, which is what a lot of spiritual, quote, gurus do. They absorb your energy through admiration of what they're doing. Let me ask you something. Did Christ feel like he needed to wear a specific outfit in order to be credible? Oh, that's right. No, he didn't. What book was this man regurgitating from? Oh, that's right. No book. They're giving it a name and a procedure and a ritual. What name did he give it? Oh, that's right. No name. Do you realize that a lot of the truth that is used about creation, life, the elements of reality, a lot of that used to solicit them into that religion is also the teachings of Christ. How ironic that they draw upon the teachings of Christ to turn those against Christ. These people have a history of pointing their fingers at themselves. They did it when they switched from dictatorship to hidden hand. They're doing it now. It could very well be that these religions were designed, their very purpose, thinking this many moves ahead, designed to fail. How? Why? Well, if they steal the teachings of Christ, then point their fingers at themselves like they always do, expose the Babylonian symbolism, the satanic symbolism of the religions they created, they could do that in hopes to make you abandon all Christ's teachings as well, do you see? If you don't know that they stole those teachings, then you'll think that they created those teachings. They expose the deity as symbolism, and then everybody will have their big sigh of relief. Oh, we don't have to be good. We don't have to follow any of that. You see, the ultimate last-ditch attempt to discredit Christ. Why? That opens the door for the new world religion of sorcery or Satanism. It has to be that because there's no way these people doing what they're doing could have given the metaphors that Christ gave to create some symbolic deity. It just the two wouldn't go hand in hand. It really, the from what I've been learning, what I've seen, they stole his teachings to draw people into both Christianity and Satanism. Then they're going to point the finger at the symbolism of Christianity and other religions so that people release all of the teachings of Christ, thinking it was a fraud, for the final entrapment. The more that I'm taught, the more that I'm learning, the more I understand what Christ was saying. I mean, from the ground up, I may say it differently, but I understand it. There are a lot of people that are like, yeah, I understand it too. That's not what I mean. I mean, I truly understand it. So, one thing I know is that somebody at some time knew what I'm learning better than I know it. And you can only know that when you know it. And how do I know this person was connected to creation? Well, from what I'm learning. Somebody knew the correct way to perceive this reality, what it was, and how to handle it, how to overcome it. I know the Illuminati didn't come up with a lot of those parables. They couldn't have, because if they could, meaning they had the understanding, the knowledge that builds the foundation reaching the conclusion in these parables, if they knew that, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing right now. Let me say that again. If these people that created religion knew and understood the meaning behind those parables, they would not be doing what they're doing right now. Therefore, I know that somebody knew outside of this control system. So, by deduction, based upon what I know, the man existed.
I can only infer that they stole the teachings of this man to sell this pagan worship of Satan. Why did he keep his mouth shut when they questioned him? A, they didn't want to know the truth, and B, they weren't going to give him two weeks to try to lead him to the truth. Therefore, he couldn't answer the questions. He just kept his mouth shut. And he knew they were all under demonic mind control. Forgive them. They know not what they do. Why do you think you didn't know what you were doing? I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. This came with a few toys like a happy meal. That's how I got introduced to the music industry. Is I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, holding up my end. What was your bargain? To get where I am now. Should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and in this earth and in, uh, and then in the world we can't see.